Okay, uh, then let's continue with standard model. We are at the moment um, in the middle of discussing the electroweak standard model theory. And uh, in the first section of this lecture, we have discussed the standard model at three level, but only looking at one generation. And by doing that, we considered the gauge sector and the gauge boson masses, the Higgs sector, the Higgs masses, the Higgs vacuum expectation value, and a lot of miracles associated to all these sectors, including uh, rho equal to one at three level, what we discussed in the morning, corresponding to custodial symmetry. Now we come to the second section, which is the electroweak standard model at three level, but considering three generations. three generations of quarks and leptons. And of course, you know phenomenologically that we know that three quark and lepton generations exist. There is the electron, muon, and tau, and uh, up quark, charm quark, top quark, strange quark, down quark, and bottom quark. And uh, in this section, we will discuss the physics and the theory associated with the existence of the three generations. In the course of this, there will appear more miracles connected with flavor and CP symmetry. Flavor physics is generally the physics that has to do with the three generations or the three families of, ah, already a question. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Uh, But the heat is unbearable, and uh, so maybe, yeah, uh, thanks. Please close as many windows as you can uh, stand. Maybe it's okay to close only this in the front because of the sound quality. Yeah. The video, so it's okay to do that. Yeah, okay, but it's not only about the video, it's also about you. So you should be able to hear something. Maybe it's actually okay to leave open only the windows in the back. So you can try. Um, all right. Um, uh, so flavor physics is the physics that has to do with the existence of three generations that describes processes where different flavors, different uh, kinds of quarks and leptons um, appear. And CP is the symmetry under charge conjugation and parity, uh, which is uh, not a good symmetry of the full standard model. And there are so-called CP violating processes, and they are also connected with flavor, as we will see in this section. So um, let me discuss briefly at the beginning some types of uh, flavor processes. So there is so-called neutral current processes. These are, for example, processes like E plus E minus going to mu plus mu minus, where here you can have a photon exchange or a Z boson exchange as well. And neutral current, as you see, stands for the fact that at the vertices uh, with the gauge bosons, the flavor is not changed. In particular, the charge of the fermion is not changed at the vertices where the interaction happens. Such a process is in general called neutral current process. And one might imagine a process which looks like this, for example, uh, muon plus and E minus goes into a Z boson and then at the end you might have a tau lepton and an electron, maybe, okay? That would also be called neutral current, but here then at the vertex, the flavor is changed, but the charge is conserved, and so it would classify as neutral current. And the question is whether such a process actually exists, whether there is a prediction, non-zero prediction for such a process in the standard model. Do you know the answer? Does this uh, Feynman diagram exist?
So the answer is no. This Feynman diagram does not exist in the standard model, and that is again one of the miracles of the standard model that we have automatically no flavor changing neutral currents in the standard model. No tree level flavor changing neutral currents in the standard model. Okay, so this stands for flavor changing neutral currents. And that would be such a flavor changing neutral current. That doesn't exist. Another class of processes are so called charged currents. That is obviously something where the charge is changed at the interaction and that can happen via W bosons. So let's say W boson, then you might have here electron and antineutrino going into down quark and um, anti-up quark, for example. This obviously is a charged current process where at each interaction vertex the charge of the respective fermion is changed. And such processes uh, involve muon decay, beta decay, radioactive beta decay, and so on. Then let's give an example of flavor changing neutral current or FC and C. So at three level, this doesn't exist, even though I've not yet proven that uh, there is no such vertex. But let me show you a vertex and a Feynman diagram which definitely exists. Because if that exists with W bosons, then you can for sure write down the following diagram, where, where you start with a B quark as an example then you emit a W boson, the B quark becomes a charm quark or a top quark or an up quark. Um, and then the W boson connects back to this quark here and uh, in this way it becomes, for example, a strange quark. Then this vertex for sure exists and this vertex also exists and so the overall diagram exists and you can emit from the W boson for example, a photon, and then you create in this way a process B2S gamma, which is a flavor changing neutral current process because in the end you do not change the charge of the fermion, but you change the generation. Third generation becomes second generation. And uh, the process is actually kinematically possible because the B quark can be transformed into two lighter particles, strange quark and photon. And this process can happen not at three level, but it can happen at the one loop level um, because of such loop Feynman diagrams. And this is also an important class of processes. And let me just draw a second example uh, like this. Strange quark, S bar, down quark, D. And those two together uh, form a so-called meson, a hadronic bound state. And this meson, which contains an anti-strange quark, is called kaon. So here you have a kaon, a neutral kaon, K0. And then you can write down such a one-loop Feynman diagram where you have here W bosons. And here in this line, there would be now an up quark or a charm quark or a top quark. And then you can connect it like this. And uh, here you might then have in the end a strange quark without, um, uh, or here, let's say uh, the arrow goes like this. The arrow goes like this. Then here the arrow also goes like this. And you could have here a strange quark and here an anti down quark. And then these two together, they would again form a hadronic bound state, a meson which is almost the same as the initial state. However, it's the antiparticle corresponding to the initial state, which would be an anti k on K0 bar. So this Feynman diagram would correspond to a process where a k on is transformed into its own antiparticle, which is a so-called oscillation, K0, K0 bar oscillation, um, 
which can happen. And uh, the K0 carries strange quark number minus one. The K0 bar carries strange quark number plus one. So uh, the number of strange quarks is changed by two units. But as you see, overall, the charge of the fermions is not conserved. So this is, again, a flavor changing neutral current, which is transmitted at the loop level. OK, so this is a class of three different classes of processes involving flavor. And you see already something important, namely the Z boson does not change flavor. The W boson changes flavor. And we need to understand why that is, whether it must be like this or whether uh, it could be changed. Um, and uh, in general, let us now discuss the theory of the three generations. So section 2.1. As uh, le the masses, lepton, quark, masses, and the so called CKM matrix. And so the basic idea is that instead of one generation, we now have three generations. So, what um, happens in one generation. There we have, for example, um, multiplets for all the quarks and leptons. One of them was the quark multiplet, quark left, with the left-handed up quark, left-handed down quark. And there are all the leptons and uh, the right-handed quarks and so on. And uh, so if we now go to three generations, then all of those matter fields get a multiplicity of three, which means we need another index for them, which denotes the generation number. So we will, uh, first of all, introduce a notation, QL. Uh, and I will use a capital uh, letters for the family number. So capital I goes from one to three and stands for the generation. So capital I, J, and so on, these indices, they run from 1 to 3, and their values denote the generation number. OK, and then let us write down the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian for the fermions changes, of course, and the Lagrangian without fermions doesn't change. So let's uh, look at the parts with the fermions. Ah, and uh, oh, sorry for that, but I forgot one detail. We now need to distinguish between what is called flavor eigenstates and mass eigenstates. And uh, we will see what that means. But first of all, in the notation, let us uh, first start by a notation which has here a prime. Prime, prime, prime. And the prime fields stand for flavor eigenstates. So in other words, they are the original fields in terms of which we formulate the Lagrangian. And then we need to interpret the physics content of the Lagrangian. And then maybe we discover that uh, mass eigenstates correspond to something else. And then we will introduce mass eigenstates, which have a notation without prime. But so therefore, for this reason, let us first use the notation with prime. Oops. And uh, so let us begin with a quark multiplet here. Q L I prime bar with the ordinary covariant derivative Q L uh, impossible. Um, okay, what is going on? Yeah, but why? 
because the battery was new, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Amazing. Jetzt die Ausfeuerungsanzeige. Ja. Okay, na gut. Äh. Okay, sorry about that. Let's continue. So here is the kinetic term and uh, in the kinetic term for the quarks let us now ignore the color index because you know that there is also a color index which also runs from one to three for the quarks but let us not write down the color index and uh, however let's focus on the flavor index so here we have a diagonal term qi prime qi prime with the same i because that is just a sum over the three generations and the three generations have independent kinetic term, terms. The same for the down quarks, dr prime i, i d slash dr prime i. Again, three independent kinetic terms for the three down quarks, then the same for the up quarks, u, u r prime i bar i d slash u r prime i. Then for the leptons, left-handed lepton doublet l l i prime bar i d slash l l i plus right-handed e r prime i bar i d slash e r prime i. Okay, so uh, I hope the notation is not confusing. There are a lot of symbols, but each symbol hopefully has a very clear meaning. Let us then also write the Yukawa term, which is the most interesting by far. And uh, initially, the Yukawa term looked like this for the leptons. We had Ye. Let's leave some space here. So let's just write the previous case, left-handed lepton bar then Higgs doublet, then ER. That was our mass term and uh, interaction term of the lepton with the Higgs. Now, how can this term change? It changes, first of all, by having now three generations of leptons. So here we have an index I. And here we uh, do not know prime, sorry, we do not know whether the Yukawa term is diagonal in the generations, so it might very well be off diagonal and matrix valued. So in general, we put here an index i and here we put an independent index j. And then the Yukawa coupling becomes a matrix uh, with indices ij for the three generations. And then we have actually a three by three coupling matrix in front of our Yukawa terms for the leptons. And that connects first generation with first generation, first with second, second with first, and so on. All combinations are in principle possible. And the matrix doesn't have to be diagonal. It also doesn't have to be Hermitian because this index uh, has a completely different physics than that index. Therefore, it's a completely general matrix. OK, and the same for the quarks. Then for the down quarks, ij, then here ql prime i bar phi ur prime j. And for the up quarks, minus yu ij ql prime i bar. Then the phi tilde from the morning, uh, sorry, d. And now u r prime j. 
and the whole thing plus its Hermitian conjugate. Okay, so this is the U cover term, so it becomes way more complicated. Now let us discuss the physics of the three generations. And uh, in the end we will obtain, for example, what are the masses of the various quarks and leptons and uh, we will discover that the primed fields do not necessarily correspond to mass eigenstates and then we need to do something about it. Okay, so uh, that is a kind of a long way for obtaining the mass terms. We clearly need to go into the minimum of the Higgs. Phi becomes phi minimum for which we choose uh, the same as before, namely V over square root of 2 in the lower component and this uh, tilde field is the opposite. And then we need to deal with uh, these 3 by 3 matrices. So there is a general mathematical theorem, namely if you have a general 3 by 3 matrix Y, then uh, let's say general 3 by 3 matrix um, can always be written as a product of a unitary and a Hermitian matrix. That is the same as a general complex number can be written as a real um, magnitude times a phase. Similarly, any matrix can be written as a Hermitian matrix times a unitary matrix because a unitary matrix generalizes a phase, a Hermitian matrix generalizes the magnitude. And so it can be written as a Hermitian matrix times a unitary matrix. However, for a Hermitian matrix, you know that it can be diagonalized, you know that from quantum mechanics experience, and so the Hermitian matrix can be written as, a, let's say, unitary matrix U times a diagonal matrix times U dagger, that is the diagonalization of the Hermitian matrix and then we have times another unitary matrix. Okay, And then you discover that a general 3 by 3 matrix can also be written in this way, namely unitary matrix times some diagonal matrix times another product of unitary matrix which is just another unitary matrix. So, and uh, by analogy to complex numbers, you can also see that there is no loss of generality to assume that you can write it such that the Hermitian matrix has only non-negative eigenvalues. Um, and so the diagonal matrix here contains only real and positive numbers on its diagonal. Positive or zero. So that is without loss of generality, you can write any matrix Y like this. Y can be written as, how do we call it, um, let's say U dagger times a positive or non-negative diagonal matrix D times another unitary matrix V, where U and V are unitary and D is diagonal and non-negative. So that is a nice way to write a general 3 by 3 matrix. To stress it, uh, the matrix is general and can also be complex. 
complex, non-diagonal, non-Hermitian, non-unitary. So it's a completely general complex 3x3 three three matrix, which has in general 18 independent real entries. And so that can be written like this. That is, has a name. This is called singular value decomposition. And uh, the diagonal entries of this diagonal matrix, they are not necessarily the eigenvalues of the matrix because a general matrix doesn't have eigenvalues, um, but they are called singular values of uh, the original matrix Y. And so let us write all the Yukawa matrices now in this way. So in this way, we obtain for each such matrix Yf with indices ij, we can write them in this generic form, uf dagger times df times vf with overall indices ij. And we can do that for the leptons, for the uptype quarks, and for the downtype quarks. We do such singular value decompositions. And then let's understand the Lagrangian uh, using this decomposition. Um, all the fermions behave in analogous ways, so let's look at one of them, let's look at the leptons, and for the quarks it works then uh, in the same way. So let's start with one step. Um, let us define new Yukawa couplings namely Ye prime as a matrix is Ue times Ye times Ve dagger and new fields of the theory namely L without prime I is defined as Ue Ij L prime J L and for the right handed Er without prime is the same with V Okay, so we redefine the couplings and we redefine our fields. And then in this way, uh, we can equivalently rewrite the Lagrangian term by plugging in all the definitions. I have to clean the blackboard, but uh, think about it. If you plug in all the new definitions, then you can rewrite this in terms of the simpler matrices. By the way, um, I made, unfortunately, another um, mistake. So maybe, uh, yeah. Do you have a question? Um, uh, should we probably the transformation go with the V data, or am I wrong? Yeah, well, uh, okay, let's do it like this. Uh, Let's do it like this. Uh, okay, so to keep in line with my notes, so let us put a prime everywhere. So I had probably better put also a prime here. So all the Yukawas have now a prime. So please add everywhere to the Yukawa coupling matrices a prime. So then we have here Yukawa prime coupling, Yukawa prime, and here also Yukawa prime. Yukawa prime, and here then the primed Yukawa coupling is replaced by unprimed Yukawa couplings, and the primed fields are replaced by unprimed fields. And then let us do a little calculation. So now the lepton term Y prime IJ E times L prime I bar times phi times E R prime J is equal to what? Okay. So the primed Yukawa coupling is replaced by U times the unprimed Yukawa times V decker. 
and uh, u times the primed L. What is going on? Let us try this. This is also what you had in mind. Okay, so let's try this. So let's plug it in now. Then uh, y prime becomes u dagger times y without prime times v. u dagger times l prime bar is the dagger version of this. So it becomes l bar without prime. And uh, v times e prime becomes E without prime. So then the whole thing is equal to the Yukawa matrix without prime times L bar I without prime times phi times E R J without prime. So that is now an equality in view of the definitions that I proposed. And the point is, we can choose the matrix UE and VE such that the new Yukawa coupling YE is a diagonal and non-negative matrix because of the singular value decomposition. So let us choose our matrices U and V such that we perform the singular value decomposition of the original Yukawa matrices. If we do that, then we can introduce new unprimed fields in terms of which the Lagrangian actually becomes diagonal. So in this way, we can do it for the leptons, for the uptype quarks, and for the downtype quarks. We introduce appropriate diagonalization matrices UF and VF new Yukawas and new fields and then we obtain that our Yukawa Lagrangian becomes the following. It becomes minus y e without prime, which is now diagonal, so it only contains the diagonal element i i times l without prime i bar l phi uh, e r i plus the same for the quarks, yd, ii, I, ql, i bar, phi, dr, i, and the same for the uptype quarks, minus yu, i, I ql, i bar, phi tilde, u, r, i. This is flavor diagonal. So, the next step is, however, Um, there is a problem inside of this quark doublet QLI because what we have done, we have diagonalized uh, 
the QL in two different ways. So on the one hand, uh, we have diagonalized in such a way uh, we have used here uh, mm. Uh, sorry for this. I think I got ahead of myself and uh, did too many steps at once. Uh, so let me remove this. Um, let me remove this term. Sorry for the confusion, but in order not to uh, make it too convoluted, let me honestly say that here I uh, jumped ahead of the correct logic. Let's only do it uh, for the electron and for the uptype work, but let us not do it yet for the downtype work. Uh, sorry for my mistake. Um, let me say once again what we can do. So we do uh, this redefinition of the fields and the Yukawa couplings for the leptons. And for the leptons, we clearly see that we can rewrite the Yukawa part of the Lagrangian in terms of the new stuff with the properties that I have explained. OK. Now uh, you can do the same for the uptype quarks. So for the uptype quarks, you will get a matrix um, U and V with index small u. And uh, in this way, you will define right-handed up quarks without prime. And you will define a quark doublet also without prime. And the quark doublet without prime is defined such that this Yukawa coupling is now diagonal. So in order to be sure, let's remove that remark. So we have defined QLI in the same way as we have defined it for the leptons, namely with a matrix U, small u, ij times the primed field J L. Okay, so we have done this definition. Um, and uh, you see somehow a problem uh, which I was trying to describe, but the description wouldn't have worked very well. So, but you see that we use the up quark in order to redefine the full quark doublet field. The quark doublet contains the up quark and the down quark, but we diagonalize the full quark doublet only with a matrix which is optimized for the up quark sector, and uh, it achieves that the Yukawa couplings for the up quarks are diagonal afterwards. But then we have kind of exhausted our freedom to redefine the doublet field. And uh, the down quark part of the Lagrangian has now some properties which we cannot change anymore. And uh, this might or might not be diagonal. And therefore, let us now look specifically at the down quark sector. For, so for the down quark sector, we obtain the following. Yd with prime will be written as u dagger d times yd without prime times vd. That is the same relationship as for all the other cases. And we define new fields. Namely, for the right-handed down quarks, we can still define new fields. dr in the analogous way as before, namely Vd ij times d prime j r. OK, so this is analogous. And if we could also define the quark doublet q left with the matrix qd, then the Yukawa term would become diagonal. But we have already defined the quark doublet by uh, using the up quark. And therefore, we have no freedom anymore. And so therefore, the down quark Yukawa terms are not diagonal. So the Yukawa coupling is the one for the electron and for the up quark that we have written here, minus the term for the down quark, which is this one here, y d i i. But then the matrices do not drop out. Namely, what happens exactly? So if we plug in this definition, 
we have on the left u d dagger uh, j i times v d i k and then here um, quark doublet q i prime k uh, j bar l phi d r prime k and even if we plug in the definition of what they are then this is equal to what is it u dagger u times q without prime and that is equal to v d d r without prime then you see that the matrices do not cancel So the matrices do not cancel. So if we would plug in the definition, then the VD and VD decker, that would cancel. But the UD decker and UU, that does not cancel. And so this remains. The product UD times UU remains. And so we cannot simultaneously diagonalize all terms in the Lagrangian. And so, uh, so let's write this down. We cannot simultaneously and so the option one that we have chosen so far is that the kinetic terms are diagonal the kinetic terms contain the covariant derivatives and therefore the interactions with the gauge bosons they are diagonal in our current approach and the Yukawas are non-diagonal And the option B is more common, but we have to work even more in order to achieve the option B, is to make the Yukawa terms diagonal. And you see that uh, we need to work a little bit further to make this also diagonal. But then what will happen is that the kinetic terms will become non-diagonal. Uh, so. in particular at least the mass terms diagonal but the interactions with gauge bosons they are then non-diagonal And so, in order to realize this option B, how can we realize this option B and why would we want to realize it? We would like to realize it because if we have diagonal mass terms, it means we can directly understand the physics content of the Lagrangian. Because if the mass terms are diagonal, every field corresponds to a mass eigenstate particle and then we can read off what the masses are directly from the Lagrangian. So that would be nice for the physical interpretation and in order to realize this option with the diagonal mass terms we do the following. We have a new definition of 
uh, this uh, quark template QLI is given as ULI and DL prime I, uh, which is the following ULI VIJ D DL J. Okay, so we do an additional transformation of only one component out of the doublet. And this messes, of course, with the gauge structure. So previously, there was a gauge multiplet where each generation has an uptype quark and a downtype quark, and we mix uh, the gauge multiplets in a way which uh, kind of interferes with the gauge structure. And because of that, the interactions with gauge bosons will be changed. But let's see where this leads us to. So let us remove this index here. And let us now finally look at the full Yukawa Lagrangian for the quarks. So the Yukawa Lagrangian for the quarks is now Somehow, I think it should be much simpler than these notes. I mean, I'm a little bit uneasy with these notes. Uh, I think let's let's forget about the notes and let's just do it from scratch. Then I think it will become much easier. So let us do it systematically. So uh, what were our definitions? Q L prime. I is defined, how was it defined? Here, U, U, I, J. No, that was without prime, Q, L, prime, J. Okay, so this was our definition uh, that we had initially. So that means we have here in the doublet capital U I J small U L prime J and here we have the same capital U U I J small D prime L J. Then we defined for the right handed down quarks, right handed down quark I was VD IJ DR prime J and for the up quarks the same And we can write the quark doublet QI as an abbreviation like this. So the upper component will be ULI without prime. So this will be called small ULI without prime, obviously. But um, this will be called V IJ times DLJ without prime, where this is to be determined. Then we have introduced right-handed fields without prime using the mixing matrices V, 
in the down quark and the up sector and we have introduced left handed fields without prime and we have defined a left handed doublet without prime and in the left handed doublet we have a problem because we cannot simultaneously diagonalize the up quark and the down quark sector and we have made a conventional choice that we started with the up quark sector that is diagonalized and we ignore for the first uh, for first time the down sector and then we introduce some notation for the down sector which still is general and now we have to optimize that last remaining part. And so let us plug in this definition into the Yukawa sector. So in the Yukawa sector now contains first of all the following in matrix notation let us uh, write the original Lagrangian once again in a more um, let's say uh, yeah, sort of sketchy way without indices then we have the left left handed leptons uh, I, with prime then the Yukawa matrix Ye phi times Er prime and so I can remove the matrix indices for the generations by putting in here a 3 by 3 matrix and then this is to be interpreted like here we have a 3 um, row vector times a 3 by 3 matrix times a column vector for the 3 generations. Then this is a nicer structure for the indices. Then the same for the quarks Q L prime bar Y D phi D R prime and for the uptype quarks Q L prime bar Y U phi tilde U R prime. Now let us plug in all the definitions um, and here the Yukawas are also primed of course I've, how could I forget about that and uh, now let's plug in everything. Um, Let's plug in everything. So here, for example, uh, this becomes what does it become? Uh, we need the inverse transformations, of course. So let us start with the leptons. What about the leptons? E R I equal V E I J E R prime j l l i equal u e i j l prime j l okay and uh, the Yukawa matrices how were they defined y f in all cases where what uh, can you remind me what was the definition oh, here y f prime u f dagger y f v f okay now uh, it's more like I feel like in an exam at the moment but uh, I hope um, you don't run away uh, after my performance so anyway um, good so let's plug in the definitions then we have here for example u e dagger y e without prime which is diagonal times phi times V E times E R prime times L L prime dagger and then let us immediately go to the next step because V E times E R is equal to E R without prime and I can use the matrix notation without indices and here this here according to the definition is nothing but L without prime bar L. So in the next line I could write minus L L bar Y E diagonal phi E R without primes and with a diagonal non-negative Yukawa matrix. Okay, now the next case here. So the down quark Yukawa coupling can be written in the same way uh, and for the doublet 
let us first uh, leave it as it is. So we have here u l prime bar comma d l prime bar times u dagger d y d without prime v d without prime times phi times d r prime minus u l prime bar comma d l prime bar times u u dagger y u v u phi tilde u r prime. Okay, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Here v d times d r prime gives the d r without prime dr without prime times phi times the diagonal down type Yukawa matrix. And here we now have the following, namely we have u l prime i bar u uh, Let's say, okay, so maybe it's nicer to write this as a Bart vector. So it's u d times the vector u l prime d l prime, and the whole combination here gets a bar. That is this object. And here, what is this object? It is the same. So we have here u u times the vector u l prime d l prime and the whole thing bar times y u diagonal matrix times phi tilde and that is simply u r index free and without prime. Now, we have defined um, our U matrix times the primed quark left-handed doublet gives the unprimed left-handed doublet. So this appears here. So here we have the unprimed left-handed doublet bar. This is this object and it appears in the down quark sector. And we have defined that the unprimed quark doublet has this component expansion. On the other hand, here does not appear the left-handed unprimed quark doublet because it is not multiplied with a UU matrix, but instead it is multiplied with a UD matrix. And so we can artificially introduce here that this UD is written as UD times UU dagger times u u, which is of course the same. And then we get here as one part the unprimed q l. So then let's say u d times the left-handed quark doublet with a prime is written as u d times u u dagger times the unprimed quark doublet. And the unprimed quark doublet got a name, UD, UU dagger. The names that we chose are in the upper component UL and in the lower component V times DL. Let us now define V equal the inverse of that matrix U D U U dagger dagger, which is the same as U U times U D dagger. Then we can go on calculating here. 
and then this matrix becomes nothing but in the upper component UD times UU dagger times UL and in the lower component we get DL. And the lower upper component, this matrix here, is nothing but V dagger times UL and DL. So then we have used our freedom to redefine our quark fields in such a way that uh, we get here just a down quark component without any additional matrix multiplication, but in the up quark sector we get something more complicated. Then in this way our Lagrangian now looks like you cover Lagrangian is equal to the following. We get LL bar YE phi ER matrix notation for uh, the three component fields in generation space and the diagonal you cover matrix minus. And now here we have the following. In this object we have this, namely we have the Bart version of V decker times UL and DL, the whole thing bar times YD phi DR without prime. And in the up quark sector, we get UL V times DL bar YU phi tilde UR. So, a uh, long story short, we have achieved the following. Sorry that it took so long. Uh, but we have now constructed from scratch the diagonalization of the Yukawa Lagrangian. And so by collecting all the definitions, um, taking into account this mismatch between the upper and lower quark components, we can on the one hand uh, obtain a form where the uptype Yukawa sector has a diagonal Yukawa matrix and the up quark appears in an isolated way, but in the down quark term there is an additional matrix product. And for the down quarks we have again a diagonal Yukawa matrix and the down quark appears in isolated form, but in the up quark there appears an additional matrix multiplication. This is the structure of the Yukawa matrix, uh, Yukawa term. And using this we can go to the gauge interactions and evaluate them. So, first consequences for the masses. If we plug in phi becomes zero V over square root of two and phi tilde becomes v over square root of 2 and 0, then we obtain L u cover becomes the mass term of the Lagrangians, which uh, contains here simply left-handed times right-handed electrons, so minus E L bar Y E V over square root of 2 times EL, uh, ER. And here in the down quark sector, um, because phi has only a lower component, this matrix term drops out and the only thing that remains is D left bar times D right. D left bar times YD V over square root of 2 times D right. And here the same, the matrix term drops out and we obtain u l bar y u v over square root of 2 times u r plus the Hermitian conjugate. And in all these cases, this is a diagonal non-negative 3 by 3 matrix and this is the vector uh, e r first generation, e r second generation, e r third generation and so on. 
So all of those terms involve three generations and correspond to diagonal sums of uh, mass terms for all the generations of all leptons and all quarks. Diagonal in generation space Okay, now let us look at the kinetic terms. What do they do? For example, we have the term QL prime I bar I D slash QL prime plus U R prime i i r i d slash u r prime i plus d r prime i bar i d slash d r prime i plus the leptons. Okay. The leptons are obviously simpler than the quarks. So let's look only at the quarks. So we have the primed interaction and kinetic terms and they are already diagonal in the primed fields. But now we have defined new fields without prime and the question is how do the kinetic terms and interaction terms look like uh, once we replace the primed fields by the unprimed fields. So there are on the one hand the d mu terms. Let us look only at the terms with the ordinary derivatives inside of the covariant derivatives. If we look only at the ordinary derivative terms, then there is nothing hidden there. Simply think of capital D replaced by small d. Then it means you have component-wise in the doublet, uh, first component d slash, first component plus second component d slash times um, second component. If you replace the primed um, doublet by this operation here with an unprimed doublet, then what happens with the d slash term? First component, basically you get the first component square plus second component square. In this uh, square, the unitary matrix in between drops out. And you simply get that you can drop the primes entirely. And so even for the most complicated term, which is this doublet term, all the matrices drop out. So all these different matrices for all the different components drop out and we will simply get uh, that the ordinary derivative terms become, for example, UL without prime but index I bar I D slash UL I plus the same with D, D L I bar I D slash D, L, I, plus, and so on. So we get diagonal kinetic terms for all the quarks and all the leptons. So there is nothing to be diagonalized. The kinetic terms were diagonal in the primed fields, and after unitary transformation, they remain diagonal also in the unprimed fields. Now then in the covariant derivatives there are terms involving the photon and the z. There are terms involving the photon and the z and these terms 
um, contain complicated prefactors corresponding to the electric charge and combinations of hypercharge and T3 generators and so on. If you remember, we evaluated the covariant derivative in terms of those um, photon and Z fields with their complicated prefactors. But what happens if you look at those terms and then replace the primed fields according to the definition in terms of unprimed fields? So, let us do that. So, for example, for the up quark field, you get uh, a term U L. Let's say, how was it? Matrix V times D L, the whole thing part uh, times the matrix U U dagger. Uh, yep. And here U U times U L V D L. So that is the definition of our Q prime bar and Q prime. And in between, there is now the covariant derivative term for the photon and the set. And so we have here, for example, electron uh, charge times Q times A slash plus this uh, effective uh, coupling for the Z. What was it? E divided by sine times cosine of the weak mixing angle times T3 minus Q times sine square. And now you must uh, acknowledge the different matrix structure. So T3 is a matrix which acts onto the two different doublet components. So T3 acting on the upper component gives plus one half. T3 acting on the lower component gives minus one half. But in terms of generation space, there is hidden a generation three by three structure. In terms of generation space, this is diagonal. It acts in the same way on all three different generations. On the other hand, this matrix acts in the same way on the two doublet components, but it acts non-trivially on the three generations. Now, there is no interference between this three by three generation matrix and this two by two doublet matrix. So I can completely commute the U3 uh, between the square brackets, which only acts on the doublet components. Therefore, the U dagger and U, they completely cancel out. And then what remains is a diagonal term in generation space. So even for the terms involving the photon and the set, the simple rule is in this term here, you can simply write it with primes and afterwards you can drop the primes and there is no change. The primes can be dropped completely in the terms involving the photon and the set. So the primed fields interact in the same way as the unprimed fields with photon and Z. And that is already an important consequence, which we will uh, write down in more detail later. But this means that there is no flavor changing neutral current in the photon and the Z boson couplings. But now, before making this more explicit in terms of Feynman rules, let us look at the W boson terms. Because here it is different. So for the W boson, there is a mismatch because the W uh, corresponds to an interaction of a lower component with an upper component. And these two transform with different matrices by going to the unprimed fields. And therefore, there is something which remains. So that is what we need to work out. 
the W interaction looks like this. I times U bar L I comma D bar L times V dagger. Um, let's say overall index I. Then I times E divided by square root of 2 is theta gamma mu. And then this matrix 0, W plus mu, W minus mu, 0. And then times the following doublet, U, L, I, and V, D, L, overall index I. And then if we just work out the individual terms, then we see that I times U bar L, I appears, this upper component gets multiplied with a W plus and this down type term. So we get this times gamma mu times V DL overall index I times I E divided by square root of 2 is theta times W plus mu plus the Hermitian conjugate, which is this I D L bar V decker overall index I gamma mu then U L I times I E divided by square root of 2 is theta times W minus mu. So these are the two terms. And so here you now see the famous CKM matrix appearing, namely in the interaction with the W boson, the down quark is transmitted uh, into an up quark or vice versa, and uh, that goes via the CKM matrix V. And so here, if the CKA matrix V is not diagonal, then you can uh, transform a down-type quark of any generation into an up-type quark of any other generation. And the connection is this matrix V. So let me summarize the whole discussion, and then I think we can finish the lecture. Let me summarize it by specifying the Feynman rules and collecting all the results in a, a systematic form. Maybe actually let me do it here on this nicer blackboard. So without loss of generality, we can assume that the unprimed Yukawa matrices Ye, U, and D are diagonal and real and non-negative. And we have a unitary matrix V which was defined as, how was it defined again? Uh, U, 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 D, Decker, which is the so-called CKM matrix. Then we have gauge eigenstates. L L I E R I Q L I which is composed out of U L I and V D L I and D R I U R I and we have mass eigenstates. DL, which is in general unequal to DL prime, 
for all the other fields, there is no difference anymore. And again, say dl prime is equal to v times dl. Okay, and then we have the following Feynman rules. Do we still have time for the Feynman rules? Yes. So, for the photon and the set interactions for fermion f bar i and fj, we get the same as in one generation times Kronecker delta ij. So that is what it means that we do not have flavor changing neutral currents in these interactions. Then, you can also look at the Higgs sector. In the Yukawa Lagrangian, there are, of course, not only mass terms, but also interaction terms with the Higgs bosons. And uh, along with the mass terms, automatically, the interactions with the normal Higgs are diagonalized because the normal Higgs appears always in the same way as the vacuum expectation value. So once the masses are diagonal, the interactions with the normal Higgs are also diagonal. And the imaginary part that goes along with the vacuum expectation value is the would-be Goldstone. This also simultaneously becomes diagonal. So therefore, we have the same result here. F bar i and Fj is also as in one generation times Kronecker delta ij and again there is no flavor changing neutral currents mediated by the Higgs sector, which is a non-trivial statement because that is also something which changes in theories beyond the standard model. Then we have the gauge interactions with the W boson, W plus. And here then up quark, outgoing up quark, U, uh, L, I. And here D, L, uh, J. This is this not the same as in one generation, but the CKM matrix comes into play. So we have minus I times E divided by square root of two times sine theta times gamma mu times a left-handed projection operator and then times the CKM matrix Vij, connecting up quark of generation i and down quark of generation j. And actually the same is true for the charged Goldstone boson. If you have a charged Goldstone G+, plus, which is unphysical, but nevertheless in our psi gauge it appears. And then we have the same structure. So that is the following, minus i times CKM matrix Vij times the Yukawa, um, down type Yukawa. Ah, sorry, here there is a right-handed down type quark. Then we have here down type Yukawa coupling uh, J. That was, of course, diagonal. Therefore, there is just one single index multiplied with the CKM matrix. And there is another charged Goldstone interaction where left-right is reversed. Here left-handed, um, oh, let's put it that way, right-handed up quark bar index i and uh, left-handed down quark j. This is given by plus i yu I complex conjugated times V IJ. Okay.
So we didn't explicitly derive this, but you saw from the Yukawa Lagrangian that all terms which were not automatically diagonal, like these ones, automatically contain the CKM matrix. And if you look at the details, then you can um, identify those factors here. So we see that on the one hand, there is no flavor changing neutral current, but there is flavor changing present in charged current interactions. And this is universally proportional to one and the same CKM matrix. All interactions are proportional to Kronecker delta ij because there is no flavor changing um, at all in the lepton sector because there was not so, such a mismatch. Okay, that ends the discussion of flavor violation in the standard model. And uh, after a long discussion, we have identified now the Feynman rules and introduced the CKM matrix. So the basic problem is that we have three um, non-diagonal three by three matrices in the Yukawa sector and to make them as diagonal as possible, that is possible. But we cannot all make them simultaneously diagonal, simultaneously with the kinetic and in other interaction terms. And therefore, there is one matrix which remains as a mismatch and uh, surely there are different ways to organize the whole calculation, but one way to define it is that there is this mismatch defined between these uh, matrices in the up quark and the down quark sector corresponding to the left-handed um, up quark and down quark fields. And uh, this mismatch enters all the charged current interactions from the W boson, but also from the charged Goldstone bosons. And in all other places where there are not W and charged Goldstone interactions, the um, mixing matrix drops out entirely and you can forget about the generations and just treat all the photon and Z and normal Higgs interactions as if there would be only one generation. So that is the simple outcome of the long calculation. But of course there is a lot of interesting physics connected to the CKM matrix and to those flavor changing processes and maybe the next time we will discuss a little bit of the phenomenology which is associated with this. Okay, so let us stop here. Thanks and see you next time.